Hi and welcome to Braga. My name is Pedro Solme. I have a Marie Curie Fellowship and in this video I'm going to tell you about what my research topic is and I'll show you where I'm working. Less than two years ago, I was working in Sweden and I decided to apply for a Marie Curie Fellowship here at the International Iberian Nanotechnology Laboratory, or as we call it, INL. INL is a joint venture between the governments of Portugal and Spain, and it's located here in the city of Braga in Portugal. At INL, my research work consists of solar cells. So I would like to invite you to take this opportunity to see what I'm doing and take a look at INL. Today's solar cells are already quite cheap, but if we want them to continue to mass deploy them, we have to make them even cheaper. One way to make them cheaper is actually to make them better. In my Marie Curie project, I'm investigating chalcopyrite materials for inter intermediate band solar cells. In order to explain to you the concept of intermediate band solar cells, I would like to use, to use the example of Olympic Games. The intermediate band solar cells, like the decathlon athletes in the Olympic Games, are very good at a number of disciplines. The decathlon athletes can, for instance, jump very high with a pole vault and also sprint very fast. They master a number of disciplines, and that's exactly what the, in the intermediate band has the potential to do. The commercial solar cells that are currently available are like most Olympic athletes. They are very good either producing a high current or producing a high voltage. The intermediate band solar cells will try to solve that problem by photogenerating both a high current and a high voltage. The intermediate band solar cells starts in a special room that we call a clean room. In this room the environment is controlled and there is literally no dust. Nanotechnology, due to its intrinsic dimensions, requires very clean environments like this one. In order to study the materials that will be used in these solar cells, we need to deposit them in a substrate, and thus, we start by cleaning the surface of what is already a very pure and very crystalline silicon wafer. Next, we transfer the clean substrates into the machine where we deposit the materials. This machine is a molecular beam epitaxy tool, and inside this machine there is such a high vacuum that the molecule could travel more than 40 kilometers without encountering another molecule. The vacuum inside this tool is as high as the one in the lunar surface. We evaporate atoms at the rate of half an atomic layer per minute. And when these atoms arrive to the clean and intentionally heated surface of the substrate, they will have enough energy to reorganize themselves and form quantum dots. These dots are the, at the heart of the intermediate band solar cell, and they are small pyramids of a few atoms width. Because these dots are so small, they show quantum effects that create the intermediate band effect. Notice that with these deposition rates, we would need to run the machine for two non-stop weeks in order to deposit the thickness of a layer equivalent to a human hair. Characterization of these materials is also important. And besides using solar simulators, we also use very complex microscopes that have the capability of looking at individual atoms. INL is a perfect location to work in these projects. We have the necessary equipment, resources and knowledge to carry out our research. The research that we started here will need many more years of work and dedication. We hope that the knowledge created here will help us to have cleaner energy in the future. The Marie Curie Fellowship was a great experience and has allowed me to grow as a researcher and as a person. Thank you for watching.